Hey everyone, Tony Dragon here, and I'm here about to react to the newest death battle, Joker vs. Sweet Tooth. Now, I'm a bigger Joker fan than I am a Sweet Tooth fan, but that does not mean I would not like it a Sweet Tooth 1. I do love the Big Lug. He's, uh, he's just so much fun. Uh, Joker just, I, I'm more of a fan of Joker just because of what it represents in terms of the Batman universe, you know. He's he's the anti-Batman, he's his greatest enemy, he's a psychological villain, uh, not just a physical threat, and I always love those kinds of villains. They're, they can both hurt people physically and also destroy them mentally, and that's, you know, those, that's a great villain for me. Because he can attack you on two fronts, and he, you know, he can just choose at random which one he wants that certain day, and that's just terrifying. Sweet Tooth is obviously more brawn. He's more, you know, violent, and he seems the more the kind of guy to punch you to death, and you know, kind of break your skull. And uh, like I, I, I think I mentioned in my pre the previous death battle, uh, Flash vs Quicksilver, as to you know these two going against each other makes sense because they're clowns, but they're you know psychotic. But Joker just seems more uh, cunning. You know, he has more tools, more toys. Sweet Tooth just, you know, has more raw power. And he has a chainsaw. And he has a chain. And he has a giant robot. So, I don't know if Joker has a giant robot. Uh, but maybe he can just kind of, like, outmaneuver that somehow. Maybe just, like, bazooka it from a distance. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like... In terms of lore, I know more about Joker, but I, but it even it's comparably like what I've seen from the games or from the TV show or from uh, from the movies. You know, you ask me something about the comics and what he's done in there, I'm probably not going to be able to answer you on that, and because I'm not big a big comic book reader because it's just the old. The old classic comic books were just so difficult to keep up with because they were so they were numbered so you know uh, I wouldn't say wrong but the way they were numbered the way they were written the way they were you know published it just was so hectic and un unorganized that it it pisses me off that I could I can't get into it because I wouldn't know where to start you know because I remember when I was a kid uh, I bought a bunch of Spider-Man comics, and I hated the fact that I bought ish, uh, a certain issue, and then I find out buying the next issue does not continue that storyline. I had to buy a separate issue, like uh, in, like a uh, different numbered issue, like further down the line to continue the story I started with. And I'm just like, like why? What what sense does that make? Just call it a different storyline and number that one instead of numbering them all. Just like, it's the first Spider-Man comics was number one. This is the second Spider-Man comics, number two. I mean, they have no connection to each other, but hey, that's what the number they were published was. Like, uh, that, that, that's so stupid. But, that's a whole different issue. Uh, anyway, Joker vs. Sweet Tooth. Who, who do I think is going to win? Um, as much as I kind of want Joker to win because, you know, I kind of like... Uh, victories that are won through cunning and intelligence. Sweet Tooth also has a lot of raw power. He just has, you know, missile after missile after missile and a giant robot. Uh, and Joker was never good in a hand to hand combat sort of way. So. I'm gonna go Joker. I'm gonna go Joker. Yeah. But like, like I said, if Sweet Tooth wins, I won't be mad. Because I like the guy too. So, here we go. Three, two, one. Yeah. They visit you for birthday parties, cheer you up when you're sad, and probably also want to kill you. Clown. Oh. The Joker, Gotham's jester of genocide. And Sweet Tooth. The violent victor of Twisted Metal. Yeah. And, an and it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find oh, out who that Harley Quinn of use. Gotham City, a vile breeding ground for criminals and crazy people. Yep. In such a bleak city, it's important to a lovely city to vacation at, even if it's during the act of murder. And no one gets more jollies out of ruthless felonies than the Joker. I'm here, bitches! And I'm famous for everybody! <laughs> but 
Before he became the clown prince of crime, who was he? A thief who accidentally got his pregnant wife killed? A mob boss who stabbed Batman's girlfriend? A petty thug in the wrong place at the wrong time? Nobody knows for sure. Not even the Joker himself. What we do know is that most likely at some point he fell into a vat of mysterious chemicals and Batman was involved. However he came to be, from that moment on, his body and mind were altered forever. <laughs> yeah. With a new smile big enough to rival the Grinch, the Joker decided he'd make sure the whole world would share in his sick Joker. And what comedy act would be complete without a few wonderful toys? This guy may like his pistols, machine guns, and explosives, but outside of that, his taste in weaponry is anything but simple. Gotta go for the gag. Like a true prankster gone mad, he carries razor sharp playing cards, a gag flower filled with acid, an electric hand buzzer that goes a little too far. But deadliest yeah. and most haunting of all is his trademark Joker Venom, a deadly concoction which poisons its victims, forcing them into fits of laughter so uncontrollable that they suffocate and die while contorting their facial muscles into a nightmarish grin. Yeah. Talk about killing the audience! <laughs> oh! Man, that shit looks dangerous to carry around. Fortunately for the creepy clown, he's manufactured so much joke venom over the years, repeated exposure has given him immunity to his own toxin. But the laughing gas isn't all that makes him a threat in battle. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Like, the Pentagon. He can whip up disguises so convincing that not even the world's greatest detective recognized him. And Beat Robo Gould in chess, that's impressive. Surprisingly great going fist to fist. And like most heroes and villains who have been in the game since the 1940s, of course, he has his own car. Yeah. Look at that thing! God, I really need to get back to work on the Boomstick Mobile. <laughs> excited for that movie, by the way. The Killing Joke. Possibly one of the best Joker laughs of all time. How far would you go to have your greatest wish granted? How much would you destroy to get your way? Any extreme! For those willing to go to any extreme, the annual Twisted Metal Contest is right up your alley. Yep. Twisted Metal competitors smash vehicles into public property and each other, and that's when they're not shooting crazy shit like rockets and bombs all over the place. I love this game. God, that'd be fun. The insane lure of Twisted Metal attracts some of the most deranged and unstable minds in the world, including a clown with a flaming scalp, the driver of the infamous ice cream truck called Sweet Tooth. Scary cereal 
killer driving a truck, Marcus Kane was a scary ice cream man driving a truck. <laughs> That was a body count, nice. His head, the sinister side desperately clawed for freedom, eventually forcing Marcus to finally give in and carve his new persona of face. On that day, Marcus King died, and the rampage of Needles King began. Needles spent his days murdering anyone he could find, including his own wife and child. He prefers killing up close and as violently as possible with his giant serrated machete, which tons of people have been introduced to. They're dead now. By his own account, he slaughtered a thousand people before he was finally arrested. It was here he was cursed by a preacher named Preacher to suffer the fires of hell, which apparently means having your head burst into flames forever. Enraged, he busted out and was eventually found by a man named Calypso. See, Calypso was the one organizing the Twisted Metal Tournament, and he thought Needles would be just perfect for it. For Needles, winning Twisted Metal meant having any wish of his choosing granted. He could finally end the everlasting pain, or have all the candy in the world, anything really. How could he say no? Needles knew just the car that would take him to victory. Complete with tasty treats, his ice cream truck, Yay. the sweet tooth. This modified Chevrolet step van is anything but what it appears to be. With its shocking maneuverability and durability, Sweet Tooth is like a tank, capable of taking loads of damage without stopping. Yeah. The Sweet Tooth menu includes front mounted spikes, gatling guns, and homing ice cream cone missiles. And for the cherry on top, he blasts the explosive clown head from the roof as a homing gun. Although it's not as fast. He laughs and goes through a wall. That's not enough, it transforms into a goddamn Woo! Room. The Sweet Bot carries a massive multi barrel gatling gun. Reinforced armor plating and can even throw its own head like a grenade. But the real beauty's in the sweet slam, an attack where the bot launches Jesus into the Jesus Christ, this is why I'm I'm feeling like Sweet Tooth might win. Forced to crush a whole building. Oh, sweet damn. Tooth can take dozens of missiles and keep on trucking. But even without his wheels, Needles is one tough son of a bitch. He's strong enough to casually shatter reinforced windows, tough enough to take a stab to the face, and he even survived the electric chair. Doesn't that mean he gets to walk free? I read that on the internet once. No. No. First, that's a myth. Second, a person wouldn't be able to walk after getting blasted with over 2,000 volts of electricity, stopping their heart, burning their body, paralyzing their muscles, and melting their eyes. Unless your needles came, who broke out of the chair, killed everyone, and escaped. See, this is why anytime I meet a clown, I take him out right away. When has a clown ever done anything to you? They've never had the chance. <laughs> Who's <laughs> laughing now, Chuckle? Well, Needles is by no means unkillable, and Calypso has played him for a fool more times than not. Like when he wished to find his missing daughter so he could kill her, and wound up trapped and suffocating in her coffin. Underground. Because she was already dead. Still, it just goes to show, Needles and his sweet tooth will do anything it takes to get the kill. What, what, have, you, what have you done with my son? What com is this like a web comic? Ooh. Ooh. Fucking clowns. Fucking clowns. All right, so yeah, yeah. Play like I said, I wasn't that big of a lore fan of Twisted Metal, so I didn't know his real name is Needles. You know, reading a good book is one of my favorite pastimes. So I didn't know his real name was Needles, and that the it was a truck that was called Sweet Tooth. But I guess it's just more, more, much more popular to call him Sweet Tooth because it's easier to remember. Needles doesn't seem that um, it doesn't seem that impressive. It doesn't stick with you as much as Sweet Tooth does. Uh, so yeah, they're both very brutal people. I, I'm just stick with Joker. I, I feel like Joker's gonna win somehow. Because he's just more cunning, because right there at the end it said that uh, Sweet Tooth, or Needles, was outsmarted by Calypso and ended up suffocating in a coffin. So he can be outsmarted. So, so uh, yeah, I'm sticking with Joker. Huh. Maybe I will. And you can too. In fact, Death Metal viewers can get a free 30-day trial membership. Uh, what else? What else? Uh. Here we go. I like the model, but not really my color. Uh, 
<laughs> Joker's gonna vandalize. No, he, he just stole Batman's Batmobile. So I guess they're gonna both use their vehicles and then end off with uh, with fisticuffs. Switches might win the first round because it feels like he's much better at. Uh, and driving a vehicle than Joker would be. What's this one do? <laughs> oh, DB, they're advertising DBX. They really want to uh, push that one. I mean, it, it has potential, but. Turn into a uh, sweet bot. Here I come, Scrawny. Oh, come on! Hit me! Alright, let's see it! Come and get it, tough guy! Come on! Oh, miserable excuse for a clown! Come on! Yeah, he's doing that. Come on! Oh, he took out a tire. Alright. Woohoo! Joker, nice move! I like how they're adding comedy to this because they are technically still clowns, or at least Joker is. He actually cares about the punchline. Let me put that out for you. <laughs> this is an interesting battle setting they have here. Oh boy. Psychotic killer inside Sweet Tooth or Needles. And he fell for it. Yep, like I said, he's naive, easy to fool. Right. Right. I want to see you bleed. I want to watch you die. Just what more of this? creepy oh come on it wasn't that funny both clowns were skilled in combat but 
Joker's superior tactics and unpredictable weaponry gave him the leg up he needed. When you have a toxic gas so deadly it can take out the entire Justice League, all the yeah. Joker needed was one opportunity to use it. And despite his lanky frame, the Joker can take a lot of punishment. And he's good enough to survive hand-to-hand -hand combat with Batman. Hell, he's smart enough to trick Batman and even manipulate the incorruptible Superman into being pawns in his schemes. As opposed yeah. to Needles, whose mental capacity is limited to just one thing. Murder, murder, and more murder with a dash of ice cream. Aww. The Joker has plenty of experience manipulating the minds of homicidal maniacs. In fact, many people like Needles have wound up in Joker's game. It was only a matter of time before he made his opportunity to use the Joker Ben. Yeah. Joker wasn't clowning around in this gas of a fight that had us on pits. And needles. We should really put you on a limit. Oh, come on, Wiz. Those puns were sweet. The winner is the Joker. <sighs> well, that was fun. Who's the Chinese? I like Chinese. Next time Damn, now I'm tempted to go with Chinese. Bell. Uh, next time. Mewtwo! Shit. It can't be Digimon again. So they're gonna have to go for another character who's known for psychic abilities. It can't be Jean Grey, that's unfair. Jean Grey is overpowered. So Mewtwo versus... Hey everybody, I'm Chad up at Moonstick. Ben, I play Wiz. And next up in death battle is Mewtwo. Dun, dun, dun. Who will he be fighting? You guys know the drill by now? Yeah. Find out early by sticking to our social media. That's at Attack on Twitter or official essay on Facebook. So real quick about in the fight. In the meantime, you can go check out our new show, DBX. Uh, right the actual death like battle was well, 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 was well, really well done. Um, I like the environment they put them in. Like It was a car chase kind of at the beginning, and then Joker cleverly managed to get inside the Sweet Tooth and start fighting Needles right there. Close combat. And, you know, Sweet, you know, Needles trying to control the car, uh, kind of distracted, and so gave kind of Joker the leg up. I like that, you know. He's trying to take advantage of any moment he can get. You know, it really added to the fact that he's a strategist. Uh, and then near the end, you know, at first I thought, you know, he was sent flying through a building. I mean, he has to be dead from that. But I guess, yeah, in terms of the in terms of the show and game, well, the game was kind of uh, doesn't count because they took these pills to add to their durability. But even the show, he he survived a lot of stuff, so I can kind of believe that. And he was heavily injured; it didn't look like he can stand up on by himself anymore. But he used his brain. You know, he manipulated uh, needles into coming out of the sweet spot and trying to get up close, and that's really, really needed uh, to give him the the Joker venom. And it's true, if the Joker venom can affect even you know, you know, Wonder Woman and Superman, then yeah, more gonna then affect uh, Sweet Tooth. I mean, needles. I, I like to call them Sweet Tooth. It just it just sounds better. Um, but. Yeah, and like I said earlier, Sweet Tooth doesn't seem that intelligent. He, he's very simple-minded, or at least, you know, narrow-minded. You know, he has one particular goal, and that's just to kill. He doesn't think outside the box. You know, not that he's stupid, it's just, you know, it's easy to predict him. And it's because of that that it's easy enough for someone like the Joker to, you know, conv convince him to do things that the Joker would want him to do. So, and as soon as I heard the Joker, you know, mentioning, he's like, don't you want to, you know, kill me you know, with your bare hands, you know, watch, you know, feel the coldness of their body. I was thinking, he's like, yeah, you know, this battle's won already for Joker. Uh, but it was really well done. I love the voice acting. It was pretty good. I mean, he's no Mark Hamill, but who really is? Uh, who, who's, and, and then who's the new voice for the new Joker now? Like, the one kind of technically replacing Mark Hamill? You know, if Mark Hamill ever stops voicing Joker, I don't think he will, but... Um, ah, I'm forgetting his name. Damn it. And he's such a big name, too. Who, who voiced him? I think it was Troy Baker. Yeah, Troy Baker, I think that's the one. Uh... 
Yeah, the neither Mark Hamill or Troy Baker, but whoever voiced Joker for this was pretty was pretty good. Uh, he did a good job. Sweet Tooth is much easier. It's just more a deep, gravelly voice. Uh, so that was that was, that one was, should be pretty easy to accomplish. Um, and yeah, I mean it was really funny too. And, you know, I like how they added the aspect. You know, because as creepy as it was near the end, because it's Joker and you know Sweet Tooth it has to be creepy. They're psychotic murderers. You know, I like how they added the fact that Joker actually did like to add some comedy to him, you know, his uh, murder spree. And, you know, that's a little that nice little uh, call to, you know, his personality. He cares, he actually does care about the punchline. You know, no matter how bad his crimes are, he likes to give, you know, us, the, the viewers, a little laugh. It's a little joke or irony in his actions. Uh, goes a long way for him. So I really like that added that aspect to him. Now, obviously, I really do want to see who they're gonna have Mewtwo go up against. Uh, just go to their Twitter real quick. But um, wait, what's this? DBX. Oh, they they were advertising that. Um, Huh. Yeah, so they were advertising that throughout this death battle, and I guess I don't mind. Wait, can I? Can I see this now? I don't know. Um, yeah, DBX, it has potential, although it, they really need to either go all out with it or kind of simplify their animation style because the first one, or at least like the promotion of DBX, which was Trish, which is uh, Jean, Jean from Devil May Cry and Bayonetta, versus Bayonetta, the pilot, it wasn't that good. You know, it was, it, it was nice, decent at least, but for the animation they were using, it didn't really look that well done. It could have been better. Like, they didn't spend any time on it. They just put together as much what they could in a short amount of time and gave us what came out. And... It, it was so easy to tell you know, what what it was uh, but like I said here we go alright so it's gonna be Mewtwo versus uh, huh Okay, there's Joker vs. Sweet Tooth, but where's the one promoting the next fight? Okay, they have the new DBX episode, one up, uh, Master Chief vs. Django Fett. I might react to that if I can right now. Uh, they're not, they're not telling me. I don't know. Well, I don't know what this is about. So maybe they haven't announced it yet. But either way, we do know it's going to be Mewtwo versus someone. And since a lot of these fights have to have a similarity, I'm going to assume it's a psychic. Now, who's another popular psychic? As I said, it can't be another Digimon because they kind of cleared that one. Digimon are just, their power skill is ridiculous. It's not fair. Um, uh, and someone like, uh, another famous uh, psychic that I can tell is... Jean Grey from the X-Men, or like a lot of the X-Men characters, but that seems unfair because on some sense, they too are way overpowered in terms of Pokemon. In terms of like, yeah, a lot of a lot of shows kind of overpower Pokemon. And within their own universe, Mewtwo is de clearly a powerhouse. He's the most powerful of all. But outside of the Pokemon universe, they are really underpowered. So, I cannot imagine who they would get to uh, fight Mewtwo. Hmm. Yeah, so they haven't announced it yet. At least not here on the Twitter page. I'm not finding it. Uh, but yeah. So, Mewtwo's gonna be interesting. I would like to know who he was fighting against. But, uh, That'll have to wait again, I guess. Um, 
So yeah, this was a good fight. I like how Joker. I like how they had Joker win you know, using his manipulation techniques. Uh, and this was a good fight. I'm satisfied. So next time I see you guys, will well, like I said, if I can react to the the new DBX right now, that'll probably be the next one I see you guys in. And, or if I'll, or I'll see you guys in the next death battle, which will be Mewtwo versus I don't know who. So, until then guys, I'm Tony Dragon, bye bye.